Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Didier from Two Three Social Club, and uh, today I'm sitting down with uh, uh, Richard Vansol. Uh, Richard Vansol uh, is a celebrity here in Napa Valley, and not in wine. This is a beautiful, beautiful change. Um, you are an artist, but you're more than an artist because you're putting things together. You're like, you know, are you an interior designer? Uh, are you what? 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 What is all you do? I mean. And the story of Richard is quite, quite incredible because, I, and that's why, you know, I'm sitting with him because uh, I went to see him a couple of, uh, a week ago or so, and, uh, and uh, the story he told me about his life was just mind-blowing. And, uh, and I really want to share that with, uh, with everybody because this is really uh, a story for inspiration and, and, and hope, and, and uh, so this is a very cool story. So let's go. Thank you, Didier. No, it's true, it's absolutely true. What you do exactly? Oh, you know, I've, I've been asked to define what I do on so many different levels. Are you an interior designer? Do you do architecture? Are you a wood, wood crafter? Are you a metal crafter? Um, are you doing and that? I do. I love, I, love, I love creating things that go into space. Right. So uh, when I was a little kid, I, I saw uh, uh, Goldfinger. I was about six years old. And when I saw the rooms change and the architecture and the industrial, how you have one room that's totally traditional. And then down below, here's James Bond in this super industrial area in a, in a, you know, he's in a cell and he breaks out and he's sticking his head up through this, this, you know, little alcove looking what's happening in this completely changed room. Then they flip the button and the room changed. It blew my mind. So I just love furniture ever since I was a kid and uh, creating things. So you, you're born and raised in that poverty? Yes. Okay. Well, I was I was born in Vallejo, so okay. I, I was born in Vallejo in '67, and I lived in Vallejo until I was uh, seven years old. Right. And then my mom and I moved up to Olympia, Washington. Okay. And we met my stepfather in Olympia, Washington, and he had several rental properties, and I became the dollar an hour schlep at these rental properties. No offense, Ed. And <laughs> but um, um, he. Uh, he, he did all kinds of different things. My stepfather inspired me in a lot of ways. He, uh, when, when, when I went to his office, he had these chairs, these uh, Mies de Vandero Barcelona chairs, and I was drawn to them. And he had all kinds of other, you know, furniture artifacts and, and you know, really intriguing pieces. Right. And uh, so I, I got inspired more and more by those. And then um, um, as he, uh, as him and I went, you know, through our lives, like through rentals and, and different, you know, things that they worked on, my mom and I worked on, right. um, painting and everything else. That, yeah, that's how I started doing my construction and everything from there. That's awesome. So, um, for people watching uh, uh, the show tonight, you know, you can definitely participate by uh, asking questions. Just type in him uh, or like a login with your camera. We have some friends in the audience. Uh, you are definitely encouraged of uh, coming up and uh, and uh, and asking questions uh, and and participate to the conversation because that's not just me that is interested. I'm sure you guys are interested too, and uh, and uh, you're not interested. <laughs> but uh, um, so we also have a, uh, ask you to send me like some pictures about you know your different stage in life and what you were doing, and uh, because this is really all about this thing. I mean. You came up where you are now, but you, you know, I'm not even sure if you went to school or not for that. No, it, 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 it's really, really mind blowing. So we're gonna uh, show some uh, some uh, some pictures of of, uh, of uh, you know your beginnings and uh, and uh, um, and uh, uh, so here you like uh, I guess making some uh, some uh, tables I guess or, or uh, well well so <laughs> I was um, I was. About 20, I was in my early 20s, and yeah, actually, when I graduated high school, I went to Sonoma State, and I was at Sonoma State for about a year and a half. Well, the summer of my my uh, senior year of high school, um, I was really rambunctious. I had a lot of wild friends, and so you know, we were we were a good partying bunch. And uh, you didn't change uh, much. Not much. Um, but at the end of the summer, um, I had an accident where I was, I was making my bed, really, and I flipped my sheet over my light cover and, and broke it. It came down and it sliced my arm. Oh, really? And it severed my artery in my right arm. Well, this ended up paralyzing my right hand for about a year. So I had to leave school and, um, you know, recondition my hand yeah. to come back. Yeah. And 
so I, I went through that and I, and I went back to Sonoma State and uh, um, about six months into being back at school, a friend of mine had this wine vinegar company and, and she was telling me about it, not the Valley Wine Vinegar Company. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so intriguing and I really wanted it. Um, and, and this gal, I knew she was going to hold on to it for a while, but I kind of thought she'd move on. So I was, you know, every time I'd see her, I asked her about it. And she, uh, sooner or later, she gave it up. And so I bought it from her and I ran this mm -hmm. for, for a little while. And, How old were uh, you then? I was, I think I was 20, 20, about 20 years old. Yeah. And then, um, um, I ran, I ran that company for a little while and then I fell ill and, uh, I got testicular cancer and I, I sold the wine vinegar company and I opened up a health store and juice bar up in San Lina. and I designed the bar and built the bar and built the menu and oh. all of that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was my early twenties. But you know, also like something really interesting is like you know, so um, to get where you were there, I mean that uh, because you went through a different stage in your life, you know, just to really to to uh, be able to uh, subsidize yourself and uh, and uh, and uh, be able to uh, to uh, um, you know to to generate some money to be able to start. Well, I mean. To start with, I mean that's a funny thing. I barely but, had any. I mean, I just did what I could with did, what I did, had. Yeah. What, what, is it a rumor or is it true that you know uh, uh, you went to uh, uh, be a, a hairstylist? Yeah, you know, it's just true. to make some money so you can go to where you know the, go to the direction you want to go. So yeah, were um, you like also like you know a, a model? What model? No, no, I never made money doing that. I know. I just did that for fun. Oh, is that right? Yeah, okay. yeah. It was a weird club in the city. Don't tell them. But what no, kind of club was I told it? everybody. I'm kidding. Um, I just, I, like that, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's over. Right? Um, no, no, I, uh, <laughs> no, I, um, um, God, that's quite a question. Um, I became a hairstylist to sub when I decided to be an artist. Yeah. So, um, I owned, uh, mixers. It was a, it was a health store and juice bar up in St. Helena. Yeah. When I fell ill, I sold the wine dinner company and opened up this little store in St. Helena on Spring Street. And it was, it was great. I mean, I was in St. Helena, and this is a 92, 93-ish, so not a lot of people knew about, you know, juicing, and, and um, so I opened up this health store. I ordered every vitamin on the wall because I had no idea what I was doing. Right. But, um, so I sold, I sold vitamins and I sold juice, and I opened it free to the people that were in my cancer uh, yeah. center and my cancer clinic to come in and actually um, buy everything at wholesale. I wouldn't, I wouldn't charge, you know, I wouldn't make money off of them. It's yeah. like, I want them to come juice for free. Yeah. And I told them, come up, do a shot of wheatgrass, have, you know, have a juice with me and tell me what you're doing to yeah. take care of yourself. And, and it was, it was really incredible. I mean, I had people from, you know, everywhere, all, all and, creeds and, and colors. And, and, and this it, came up after your cancer? Uh, this is while I was sick. Yeah. Okay. So I, I had so already, I had already had to see okay. cancer and, and um, then I opened up this store and I ran this for several years up in St. Helena and then I decided to open one in Napa right. and I opened mixers in Napa um, I think in 94 and I had it until 99 and I decided to do a vegetarian restaurant uh, in wow. that space too. So, Are you vegetarian? Uh, no, I was then. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I quit eating meat to keep my metabolism yeah. running really well and, and mainly juice. And uh, and uh, for all this time, you had this. Uh, you, you surely, uh, you know, it seems to me that you, you may you must have had the sup uh, support of your family. I mean, like you know, uh, in a way, like you know, your your uh, your uh, step uh, father and your mom. I mean, that you know, they let you like you know work in a, a bathroom, you know, when you were like you know old, like five years old or six years old. Oh no! Uh, you mean the bathroom the, that I created clay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so my mom, my mom gave me clay when I was I don't know, eight or nine or. And most kids would make like a bear or something. I made a bathroom. I made a scale and a toilet and the sink. And all that. I just love, I don't know, I love space. I love creating space, you know, and, and, and architecture. And so that, that was kind of my... So every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist when you grow up. You mm. know, this is not me. This is Pablo Picasso. Do you want to talk about it? Huh? You want to talk about it? Sure. You know how you keep you know, this 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 excitement. You know when you're a kid and and still you know this you know your age. You know be able to like really have you know uh, um, 
uh, inspirations and uh, and uh, and uh, because every jobs are dif are different. Every every day is an inspiration. I mean, it really is. Everywhere I go, it's everything I see, this every is space I go this to. This is a survivor. This is a survivor. Well, it's you, no. You're not talking about it. It's um. Oh well, hi. Uh, hi. Hey, where's someone I'm logging in? <laughs> Some project. Do you recognize them? Hi. They're taking. <laughs> So, so um, you know, I was a very hyperactive child. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. I was just a really hyperactive kid. Yeah. So I, I was always excitable. Like I was excited about everything I was doing. I was excited about every moment I had. I was excited about everywhere I was. I was right. excited about anything I got my hands on. Right. And um, this excitability as I got older. Um, started applying to things and yeah. started applying to things I'd be interested in, like food. I've loved food since I was seven years old. You know, so my parents, you know, at seven when we met my stepdad, he also had rules. So I had to be home at six o'clock every day and, you know, and he had a lock that he put on the TV, on the plug of the TV, so I couldn't watch TV. Right. But I had to be inside. So you kind of get bored. Well, we lived right on the water. So I would go out and I would fish and catch little perch and this and that. Well, I'd bring them in and I would fillet them and I would saute them and I would pull bisquick and all these funny things and I would make all this stuff. So when they came home, they yeah. had treats. Yeah. So I, I, I loved cooking. I love I, anything that had to do with creating, like yeah. taking different elements and different materials and making them into something. Is, and there's, there's something about taking different elements and making them, you know, just creating them into something. So when I built mixers up in St. Helena, I took it over and they were, you know, I started bringing in salvage materials and, yeah. and you know, building my bar or building this. And then when I built mixers down in uh, Napa, um, all my tables, I took gourds and cored them out and made them into light right, mixtures yeah. and I found salvage metal. And this, this kind of became the root of what I, I you know, my whole company yeah, and, yeah. and developing my company. Yeah. So, um, you know, my company now, we, we take the Mennonite settlements and we get parts of ships um, and, and wow. I get pieces of salvage from all over the world to create these pieces that, that I'm engineering for each space and each space is a tailored event. Yeah. Your space, there's a tailor to it, yeah. there's, a, there's a look to it. Um, everybody has a, a, a taste, everybody yeah. has a flavor, yeah. but I have a flavor that I like to apply to everyone's sensibility yeah you know so. so is it like a material that you like to work most mm -hmm. you know like iron wood plastic no everything the same wood wood is my core um i you know there's ever since i was a kid i love the grains of wood and and you know the the, the way you can manipulate it like into any shape i mean yeah. you can create you can create any shape with wood uh, but so here we like you know let, let's uh, let's kind of uh, look at this uh, uh, those pictures here and, yeah. uh, and uh, so you, this is a stencil you're doing here right so what this is is a this is a music stand actually Keith Rogel um, which uh, a lot of us here know um, he he uh, was the developer of the Carnero stand okay. and he's also the developer of Napa Pipe um, he his his father asked me to build a music stand for um, his granddaughter, Abigail. And Abigail was getting ready to go to the boss. Like, I mean, she's an amazing violinist. Right. Well, I've been playing violin since I was seven years old, too. So that was another thing with Septa, got me into violin. Um, but hmm. they wanted this music stand. So yeah. I took a log, um, I had this big log of walnut, and I chainsawed the, all the pieces were made out of this log. Right. Um, and so what you were seeing uh, before, this is the Cade table, but um, these are slices of the log that I actually you know, created the music stand, the bass, and then I used aluminum. Yeah. And I built this music stand for Keith Rogel's niece. And uh, it was it was a because you you, 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 you also you, but you do have to be like a very uh, um, uh, agile you know with your finger as far as like you know using knowing the tools what you can do with it and how how you learn all this shit I mean frankly it's do I mean like a you just do it yeah I, I um, it's like so a, this this is a great story my my uh, my mentors um, who I appreciate so dearly are Dan Warden um, and. 
and Kim of Shopworks. And, and Shopworks Design, I met Dan on a Sunday, on Memorial Day weekend. By Tuesday, I had a set of plans um, for me to bid on some pieces yeah. for Cade Winery. And he asked me to do this table and all this, and there was all this metal work, and, and I'd never done metal work before. Right. So I bought, huh. um, I got the job. So I bid on it, I got the job. Well, I didn't know how the hell to build a metal table, you know, at all. So um, I went down to complete welding and I said, I need to weld this table. I don't know what I need. They told me what I needed, a MIG welder, a TIG welder, an arc welder, a combination. I said, great, I bought it, I read it. That was the first thing I ever built was that table. And that table, um, I took, uh, panels out of a nuclear submarine out of Mare Island right. and made the top with it wow. and uh, because it was in a cave. Do you, do you have to right. pay for that or this is given to you? What's that? The, the materials. Oh I no, I had to buy the materials. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, how much uh, did you pay for that? I mean, the uh, what was it? The, the, the nuclear I thing? can't say how much I paid for it. That's, you know, I mean, that's supposed to be a lot, crazy. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Kate, uh, John, so, Conover, it was a lot. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when you go and do a, a bid or something like that, you know, um, you, you're showing your portfolio to people, no. you, you don't? No, I'm all word of mouth. Really? My, my, yeah, I, I, I don't have a portfolio. So people just hear about the work that I do. Well, I guess this, I is for, this is for this fucking question here. Yeah. The next one. <laughs> just yeah. thank you. Yeah. But, um, well, but this, this, is, this, this is quite interesting. So let, let's keep going because there is a, a picture of like a two you know, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, back uh, uh, spines. You know, like oh. that was this, uh, this, uh, uh, this is wood. This is. I was you know. married once, ten years ago. Oh, this yeah. a, that's like a ring. That's, what's that? That wasn't like a ring. No, that's like your, no, your, you know, it's it's my no, my, ring, my passion. Yeah. My, my, well, I designed our rings too. Um, this is my old wedding ring. I, I wear it because it's ours all the way around. But. Um, yeah, I apply. I apply my. I apply my design to everything. Yeah, like everything, all the time. So what you? What, 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 so what you find your your inspiration? I mean, really. I mean, uh, you know, like uh, here's here's the uh, the, 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 the scripture I was referring to. Obviously, that's well, not a ring. So, but this so I, I met the girl I was going to marry in Costa Rica under a live volcano, and uh, we just fell for each other like crazy, and we got married four months later. And, and, and her parents lived in Kaneohe Bay, Oahu, um, right on the water facing China's cap. And, I, and so, you know, marriage is strength. Yeah. I mean, that's, you've got to create strength. You've got to pair strength together. Yeah. So I decided to carve our spines out of African mahogany and make it look like the Hawaiian tropic, um, you know, the Hawaiian punch guy? Uh, from Hawaiian punch? Yeah. No, 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 uh, no. His hat was all weird, so I, I did the same kind of deal. But... I tried to create a, you know, our spines, uh, six feet of separation, ten feet tall, and I, I carved. And you did that in Hawaii? Uh, I did in Hawaii. Yeah, I did. So it, we, I did it three days before the day our wedding day. You use like a Swiss Army knife? To I did. Yeah, yeah, my teeth. <laughs> I uh, no, I used jigsaw and then we carved it all out yeah. and, and erected it. And because it was, mahogany is pretty, uh, that's pretty uh, hard wood, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, mahogany is fair. It's yeah. it's in between. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. I mean, this is like that's different. Yeah, you know, yeah. totally different. So you, um, so you get your your inspiration from you know. So you, when you talk to art, uh, artists, you know, you know, very often, you know, people are like, you know can be rebels. You know, it's like you know there is a lot of hatred, you know, coming up out of that, and the, and the kind of like the painting we reflect that. Mm. You know, you have some uh, uh, people that you know looking up. Where you get your inspiration from? It's just nature. I mean, nature. You know, I, I, um, I've been an outdoorsman since I was born. Um, I, I grew up on the ocean. Yeah. I've grown, uh, moved up. When we moved to Washington, I moved to a, uh, uh, about a 200 acre or whatever. Um, I, I'm guessing I was seven, but it was seemed big. Um, uh, we, we lived in the woods in Hartstein, right across from Hartstein Island in Shelton. And uh, there was this oyster bed and woods, and I just, I mean, it's, it's nature involved. I mean, I've, I've climbed everywhere, I've fished everywhere. I, I have something I want to show you, and, uh, and uh, I've been hiding this so for a bit here. Oh, sure. I, I want to share that with uh, you know, everybody here. And you, That's pretty heavy. Oh, Jesus. Do you recognize this? <laughs> <laughs> I love that piece. Awesome. Yeah. 
So um, my plate. So they gave me a plate and said, "Do something with a plate." So here, here oh, is, God. you know. Yeah. So that's pretty heavy. This is, you know, like you know, a good like a 25, 30 pounds, you know, yeah. uh, uh, piece here. Yeah. So this is fun. These are shavings I got from my buddy Andy. Um, um, he's a metal fabricator. He has uh, um, copper and iron works here in Napa. He gave me all of his metal shavings one year. And then this is a really interesting piece. This is the plumbing pipes that came from um, Calisto well, the, the plumbing pipes that go from Calistoga Geyser to Indian Springs Resort. And they have to change them every 10 years because they coagulate with all these crystals. So I shoved that in the middle. This was one of the guitar spindles for Bottle Rock because I did all these guitars for Bottle oh, Rock. Oh, so this is recent? Uh, this was last summer. Yeah. Oh, I thought you did that when you were 10 years old. No, no. No, no, no. It's really dusty, too. You should really, you know, clean this up. Well, you know, I put it up from the... the but no, this, this was for... Uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember what... This, this was for... Um, it was Feast of Four. It was yeah, Feast of Four. They gave us a plate and said, de decorate something for a plate. Yeah, and it was a nice auction, so... Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and, uh, and uh, you know, I feel like, you know, uh, um, hunger. Yeah. You know, this is, like, to me, this is like a really, uh, you know, forks, of course, you know, and, uh, and but this is more like a spaghetti type yeah. of thing coming up out of the yeah. plate. That's the way I look you at know, it. You uh, know, it's a the, bunch of forks going like after spaghetti. It's very Italian, you know, the sun, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the kind of like a... Uh, uh, um, I was going to go with something else, but you know, I decided to stay, you know, kind of. Uh, hey, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's that's pretty. Um, so you did it a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. These were old shelving from um, the uh, Gap uh, warehouse over in Vacaville that I took a bunch of these out and. Um, yeah. So so you you walk to like a place and you see like a you know, piece of metal, a piece of wood, and said like you know you. You like you know, look at it and stare at it, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and something is creating your mind and uh, and. Uh, well, the space the space creates it. So when my clients come to me and they say we have a winery or a restaurant or um, a residence and here's what you know, here's here's what we want you to do. We right. want you to create this. I I take these materials and I turn them into pieces that'll be functional pieces for their properties or their restaurants. Uh, talking about the clients, you know, have you had, you know, being hired and uh, and uh, working with, and then, you know, during the course of the, uh, the you know, the, the, the development and design where you have like the, the, uh, the, the, you know, the ideas, you know, starts to switch where like you have your own, you know, vision as the artist, you've been hired to do something like that. And then people are starting to, you know, to, to, to see that and develop in this and some is they're not so happy. You know, they're like, you know, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this shit or not, you know. Mm. How do you handle that? It, it, does it happen? It must happen. It's like a, going to a restaurant and then you think that like, the restaurant is great, you have the meal. I don't think I've been doing this no. long enough to have anyone not like what I do yet. No. It, it's probably coming, yeah. but so far so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just about, just, I've, I've had two projects that I've had a tough time with in my whole career, but not because of, of the idea, yeah. it was because Sometimes I invent everything. Yeah. So I invent every piece. I invent, I invent the space. Yeah. So, and then I create all the furniture, fixtures, lighting, everything for the space. And they're all inventions. And you know, they haven't been built. So sometimes we get into building them, we're like, oh my God, what the hell did I do? You know, it's like I've created this thing that yeah. we can't figure out how to put it together. Right, so right. my first failed job was about, oh God, 10 years ago. Um, for a place called the Holy Cow in San Francisco. It's a hell of a drinking bar. <laughs> and my buddy Bill Herman, um, actually, I met him with my wife in Costa Rica. That's how I met her, uh, my ex-wife. Um, but, but anyway, Bill owned the Holy Cow, and he wanted me to make these tables. So I came up with this idea of these metal sprigs that came out of the ground, and then I was gonna pour resin, three inch thick of resin, and make it look like big chunks of ice floating mm -hmm. on these pieces of metal. And no matter what I did, that it warped, it, it just would not yeah. work, would not work. I worked on it for six months and finally I called him up and said, it's not going to happen. And uh, that was that, you know. And that, there was that piece and then I, I designed some other pieces that worked well, but my fabricators didn't do a great job on it. So we went back and fixed them, but the idea stayed the same. Right. What is your big, uh, biggest success, the, 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 the piece that you're the most proud of? Um, a residence in Oakville. 
Um, I had a, a client come to me um, and uh, he had a 3,500 square foot basement that was um, the concrete shell. And um, I had um, unlimited creative license and I designed all the furniture fixtures and everything in the interior. And I, I turned it into a palace. Uh, it's a basement palace. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it, there isn't one speck in one inch on the whole property that doesn't have some kind of magnificent texture that you can touch or feel or right. or, or you know get emotional about and and uh, every time I go there and every time I see it it's 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 my opus right yeah yeah, yeah. but now I have a couple new projects where it's kind of starting to turn into yeah is a, is a, um, is a, everything uh, um, is limited with uh, money I mean like you know uh, do you, I mean and uh, and the, when I'm saying money is like because I guess it's perhaps you know you're working with noble, no, noble material, you know, and uh, that costs money. Or can you do something? Could you be able to do something very, very cool on the budget? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I work in budgets all the time, you know. Every well, day. But, yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, but but it, it, it all depends, you know. It, it's um, I mean, I, I uh, like like the Oxbow. Yeah. Um, I made all of the seating in front of Ritual and and Sikasa. And, yeah. And I took down uh, the bleachers out of uh, University of Southern Chicago. I got all the bleachers from there that, that a salvage company had done, and I bought yeah. them from them. And I had all the steel, right. and I had all these pieces. So they asked me, they said, hey, we need all this seating in front of the Oxbow. And I went, okay, well, let me see, you know, here's our budget. And the budget was really small, so I, so I just looked around my studio, what I had laying around, yeah. and I said, you bet, I'll stir all this stuff up and we'll make some seating. And that's, yeah. that's kind of how it went down. So um, it, it all depends on what I have in stock sometimes. Yeah. You know, if, if I have leftovers from a okay, project, yeah, okay. I'll use those right. leftovers okay. to create a, a smaller budget project. Right. So, so you know, it's like, yeah, it's not... Uh, you, you guys have any questions? Who are they? Well, I have no idea, no idea. <laughs> So, like, you know, one more question. They're in love, though. They're <laughs> really cozy. Is that, is that taking a nap? We were, you know, that's... Uh, um, one more question. Um, and uh, that will be the final. Um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? I mean, you've been moving, you know, we're going to talk. I mean, this li his life is, like, a, so incredible and uh, so fascinating. It, it should have been, like, you know, at least a couple of hours show. You know, just a way to go, like, through... Uh, we, we, we can do that. Uh, um, but... Uh, uh, Try to go like around everything and see what you know, you know, makes you move. And uh, and uh, I don't think even a scratch the fucking thing. <laughs> but uh, um, do, five what, years what, from what, now, what, 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 yeah, what you see five, five years from now, you've been moving and uh, you've been growing fairly rapidly. You've been recognized as one of the greatest, uh, very, very, you know, great uh, uh, local uh, uh, you. person. You're going out states pretty much, you know. Mm -hmm. I know that you know there is some some uh, some uh, discussion about something is pretty cool so you definitely like growing you know uh, um, uh, is Napa going to be big enough where you see yourself in five years from now uh, well definitely expanding and and um, um, basically uh, yeah um, five years from now I want to we're working on doing furniture lines we're working on on so many different things but um, I want to, five years from now, I just want to be doing 10 times more of the same thing I'm doing now. Can you handle it? I mean, like, how much can you Absolutely. Handle? I mean, I, I, I know that like, you, you I, want I, I, I will go and go and go. And, and the beauty is, is I get to find artisans and I get to bring them into my world mm -hmm. that do really good work. Like Mark Fogarty right over there, one of our guests. He's, he's building pieces for me. Yeah. And, and, you know, when I can, all the ideas that I have, it takes, it takes craftsmen. Yeah. And craftsmen are... A dime a dozen. Oh. Uh, I, mean, I mean, no, wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wrong. What, what, I meant, what I meant to say was not a dime a dozen, but very few and far between. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, craftsmen are kind of a dying breed. In well, America. you need to be able to delegate and trust people to do that for you too. Jesus, sorry. Right. Um, well, like, I know. That's a I, I was thinking about something else. Mm -hmm. Something else came to mind, like in the middle of that. My mind works really quick. But, but you know, it's. The, the, you know, craftsmen are, are few and far between, and, and I have a hell of a time trying to hire them. Right. Uh, I can't find people, so I find people like Mark and, and other, uh, other people that do amazing are fabrication. Are you fun of people? Are you fun Mark? You know, what, you know, 
just being in Napa and being referred and yeah. every, see, you know, we're at a point now where everybody knows what I do. Yeah. So they're like, Hey, I got a friend or I've got a buddy right. or I've got, um, mind. I, you know, here's this guy that did this for my house or right. Right. whatever, you know, so I get, I get referrals all the time for different craftsmen yeah. and, and, uh, but I still have a really hard time finding him to work for him. We're going to keep going to the discussion and you know, off camera because this is still very, very interesting. Uh, to me, um, uh, one more thing uh, um, on the April the 25th, 26th mm -hmm. in Calistoga, uh, will be a live streaming. Uh, we'll be live streaming on the 26th actually, but uh, uh, um, our host uh, for the event won't be me. Thank you very much, but that will be Richard. Yeah. So, Richard, like you know, will be like the idea is that to follow Richard around and say hi to his friends, you know, uh, uh, all different arts that's making and, and uh, have some intelligent questions. Uh, uh, well, them and and, uh, and uh, uh, myself and, and a few wonderful people like Penelope. And, yeah, we're uh, going to see Penelope of, um, of Engage Arts. It's going to be a uh, um, a arts fair on uh, Saturday and Sunday, the twenty fifth, twenty uh, fifth and twenty sixth. And um, there's about forty artists that'll be there, and there's musicians, you know, to fine art. And um, yeah, we're gonna walk around with your cameras and just yeah. talk to people. And tickets are still available. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah. What is it? You know, Penelope. Uh, How much Engage, are the tickets? Engageartfair.org. They are twenty dollars. Twenty bucks. Or fifty dollars, which includes wine tasting. Okay. So twenty bucks, you know, and you don't drink. Or fifty bucks, you can drink as much as you can. Mm. And those are for the four, uh, for the two days. Uh, each day. Each day. Oh, each day. That's fine. You know, 50 bucks, you know, you go to red and, uh, and it doesn't get you like, you know, a cocktail. So, all right. So, here it is. So, engage. Uh, go to engage. Uh, dog. Artfair.org. Artfair.org. Dot org. Okay. Dot org. Okay. Here it is. Uh, here it is. Dad. In the back. Dad. Do we have it? I'll be it. Uh, we'll it. we be there, definitely, uh, because it's fun. It's fun to see like some people that you know not necessarily just into the wine, uh, the, the wine industry, and the, and, the, and the succeeding. I mean, it really like you know opened you know Napa in the in the in a different way. That's like you know really uh, that, I really enjoy that. Really enjoy talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the couple. They didn't you know, fall asleep here. I can out. see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know and. Uh, <laughs> And until, awesome. and until next time, um, that's it. So long, guys. So long.